take the bottom off. All right, so I got uh, what I'm going to do here is show you how I do a uh, weave style using Baltic birch. This is a plain, plain old sheet of 12 by 12 Baltic birch. So I start out by cutting um, strips of it, and um, so I want to get them somewhat the same size. I give a little bit extra here, and I'll sand that off afterwards, um, just so I don't when I'm cutting it don't get it crooked or whatever. So a little waste there, but not too bad. So uh, <clears throat> let's get started on that. idea on that. Point seven one, and the uh, thickness is point seven. So I need to sand just a tiny bit more, not much, and uh, we'll get her started here. The next thing we're doing here is we're gluing them. Here, you're gonna get more squeeze out as we put clamps on. Just keep it clean as you can. Okay, I got all seven pairs glued up. All right, now we got all our seven pairs glued glued up. Now we want to glue two pairs together with alternating um, cross grain there, and uh, like that. We'll have to use different clamps, of course, but the um, principle is the same. A little glue on, not too much. Okay, so this is the board all glued up now. Um, just for the record, I ended up making an eighth pair, and that is glued on here now. Because I, uh, with only um, 14 pieces or seven pairs, it was like 10 inches. And this is 12 inches, so I wanted to get it a little closer to square. So by adding that on, I'm closer to 11.5 inches here. And just, we'll just cut off a little bit of the waste at the end. So, All right, so I've gone the board all nice and flat. It turned out after all the sanding out, I got lost two hundredths of an inch on thickness. It's 0.68 now, which isn't too bad. Um, what I'm going to have here is 11 and a quarter inches of usable board space for the di outside diameter. Mark, th mark the center. And so I go through this uh, procedure when I'm designing here. Uh, I'll show you what did I do here. Mark to use the board actually. And um, so I go uh, mark on the paper, making sure I'm nice and straight. Go all the way across. Now I've decided to go with uh, seven rows, so just cover up the line, making sure I'm straight across the graph paper, making my mark. So I need to do that seven times. Seven. Now, like I said, we 11 and a quarter inches, and then so half of that is five and five eighths. So we need to find a center point here. So I'm just going to make this here the center point. So mark this at the top. So five and five eighths, I said. So measure from the center to five and five eighths. It's about right there, something like that. Now I like to go around 25% of the uh, diameter, outer diameter, top outer diameter of the bowl. So 25% of 10 is two and a half inches. Uh, so I'm going to go with that two and a half inches, just roughing it up here instead of 11. Um, so two and a half inches, half of that is two point, half of that is one and a quarter. Um, will be a radius here. So now I mark the outside 
from the top all the way down to the bottom, that'll be your outside wall of the bowl. Now, um, what I do here <clears throat> is I find the intersection of the outside wall and each ring, and I mark mark it there. Make mark. All right. Now I transfer that mark up to the upper one, keeping this straight up and down. So I make a mark there, and then I make a mark mark on the bottom one I said that I'm using as a reference here, basically. Um, just keeping this straight up and down. Make my mark up, and okay. now. If I join this line from the top one all the way down to the bottom one, that will be your definition of the bowl in and out. Your wall thickness then is this guy right here. So what I do here, I use a tape, a straight edge too, but it doesn't really matter here. Just more for um, sake of Got it. You know where your board, where you're cutting on your board here. So. so that's A. B. C. D. E. F. G. A. E, C, D, E, F, G. All right, we now have it designed. Um, now we need to transfer this onto the board. And that's pretty easy. So <clears throat> what I do here is I have a compass and um, set it Set it from the center of the board to the outer diameter. Yeah. All right. Make my circle. All right. Make the next one. And do this for all seven. Alright, got all circles drawn. You can see that I'm pretty much going from side to side here using all the wood we can. So that's it for that part. And okay, so the next thing I do here is I drill the holes so I can get the saw, scroll saw blade through the hole, cut the out, cut these out. So I've uh, gone ahead and made these little guys here. And if I've done it right, it's the same angle as outside wall here so um, that's all it is is same angle so now what I do here is I want a hole I don't need to do the outside I can do that with either bandsaw or just leave it to square but I do have to do it for all the others so what I have to do here is get a get it started just a tiny bit of start I kind of drill right through the line. So then I put the, I'm doing this as, I'm, I'm uh, keeping the drill at the same angle as this little piece of wood here. It's hard to show this on the camera here, but so uh, that's the same angle. So I just go ahead and uh, drill, keep trying to keep it the same angle the whole way. You know, it's pretty close. One hole. All right, got all the holes drilled out now. Okay, I'm gonna cut the outside diameter with my bandsaw.
All right, I got ahead and uh, set the angle of the scroll saw, same angle as that little piece of wood that I was using for drilling the holes. And I use a, um, a blade called the Ols Olsen Thick Wood um, Blade here. So it, it works pretty good for, uh, because it's a little thicker wood than normally you'd do on a scroll saw. So I use them, seems to work pretty good. I got my scroll saw set up here, blade in there, and I won't bore you with watching me to cut this whole thing, but this is how it's done. I like to keep somewhere on the line. You know, we got this big old drill hole in there that took a lot of the, you know, the room up, so it thins up the walls, but Usually I can don't need much wall thickness on these guys. So all right, so this was the original design. Uh, so this is the bottom part that I didn't explain all the way. So A, B, C, D, each one of these corresponds to the B is up here. And you can see how this board isn't everything's uh, nicely fitted. The only loss you're gonna have is by when you drill your holes in there and then you cut around the ring. That's gonna be a waste. Uh, but other than that, it's it's using the whole board here. Uh, you, so then you just take them out, stack them on top of each other. So now I got all the rings cut. And here's all the rings cut. Now I have them all in line right now, but the idea will be to flip it by 180 degrees each one. So um, when you do that and you have an even number of pieces, that's vital here to make this work. So it needs to be an even amount of uh, um, patterns here. In our case we have 16 of these pieces here. We alternate up sideways and up and down uh, for each one. So what we'll do here is uh, dismantle this like so and then like I say for each one now we're going to um, alternate There we go, now we got our bowl. So, let's zoom out a little bit here. Here's our bowl. So I gone ahead and marked the bottom here. Um, so when I start gluing it up, I'll have some reference points here. Um, each row is um, 180 degrees out from each one, so I flip them over and uh, then we'll start gluing. All right, so this first row is uh, kind of like give me here. We'll put a little glue on the bottom of it and uh, swipe it here on the waste block. And then um, we use that center point that we create when we're doing the design of the bowl. And um, there we go. I'll uh, clamp a little tighter net. After I cut the uh, rings out, there are some burrs. I like to get rid of them by uh, Doing a little bit of this, doesn't take much, get them all cleaned up. So. so it's important to have this perfect flush, so I always take a uh, tool to it to make sure it's pretty flat. So um, simple as that right there, I've already gone ahead actually and done it, but you get the idea here. So okay, now it's time to put the second uh, row on, so put a little glue on it. it around here and I'm going to be using a lathe again to um, run on get the alignment marks lined up and uh, gotta make sure it's flush check to make sure it's not too far out of looks like it's uh, moving nicely here not not too far off so I think I got that one lined up okay I got the next row on there and I've done my checks make sure it's somewhat centered here looks like it's good there 
and uh, this is actually helping right here center it right now so can't be too far off that way got my uh, marks lined up here um, so I'm trying to keep this edge and this edge all aligned and it looks like I got it there and I'm looking here looks like I got it there too so um, we'll let it dry all right I got set all seven rows glued on now so I'll let that dry uh, probably a few hours or, or overnight and I'll start lathing it so I'm gonna stop here on this project and um, just a lot of lathing and when I'm all done I'll show you what it looks like all right this is what it looks like right before I cut it off one last chance to look at it before I take the bottom off okay this is the final bowl now I, uh, got a few coats of hand weight on poly on there now and um, you can see that the alignment seemed to work out pretty good it has the uh, look weave look to it and then uh, the bottom of it here the weave look to it and that's that